Hi everyone, it's Stephanie here and welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to be creating two cards and we're gonna be using the staggered paw print stencil. You can use any stencil for this card design. I just wanted to show you some quick and easy ways that you can do ink blending with a stencil to create different patterns on your card panels. A stencil design like this works really well for the cards we're gonna be creating because it has really large images and they're kind of separated into individual parts of the stencil. Something that's more intricate and designed probably won't work as well for this because we're gonna kind of change up how we use the stencil to get two different looks. Anytime I'm doing stencil work, I like to have my panel adhered down to my work surface with some kind of repositionable tape. That just ensures that it's not going to shift while you're doing your ink blending and you're not going to end up wrecking your panel. So I just added two pieces of tape on areas of the panel that I knew I wasn't going to be worried about the ink being applied. And then I'm adding my stencil on top, kind of positioning it in the shape that I want it. And then I'm using that same post-it tape to hold that in place. For this first card, I want to have the pattern come from the right hand side of the panel, but I don't want to have it fully go over to the left hand side. So I positioned it more towards the right hand side of the panel, and now I'm using some more of that post-it tape, and I'm just covering up any of those paw prints that I don't want the ink to go into. And then I'm just going to start with my picked raspberry distress ink, and I'm going to start applying the color on the bottom corner. Now once again, if you know me, you know I love a lot of color. I love vibrant, bold, colorful cards. So I am using a bunch of different colors on this card design, but you can mix it up and use whatever colors you prefer. You could use one single color, you could use an ombre effect and have it go from darkest to lightest. Whatever is your preference will work for this. You just wanna apply that ink through the stencil until you have it completely covered. So I'm just kind of going back and forth between my colors since I am doing a multicolor design. And I always like to go in with my first color, go in with my second color, and then kind of go back and forth between the two to blend them together so I get a really nice, smooth, even blend. I also find with this kind of ink blending where you have multiple colors kind of blending together inside of those openings on the stencil, that going in a diagonal formation really helps to be able to have all of those colors kind of blending together. So that's why I always prefer when I use this type of stencil and use lots of colors and I want the colors to go into the paw prints together that I would do it in a diagonal formation. So I'm just finishing up here with my blue color. I decided not to add any purple to this design. I'm just gonna use these five colors and I'm just gonna finish up there with that last color and I'm gonna go back in with my green just to finish blending that out. And then once I have that done, we can go ahead and remove the stencil. And what we're left with is this really cool paw print design that kind of starts over on the right hand side and goes over towards the left and kind of tapers off. Now, as you can see on the top of the panel, I did end up getting some ink up there. I didn't have it fully covered, but I'm not too worried about that because I am gonna cut this panel down a lot smaller. So we're going to just cut that little bit of a mistake off of there and you will never know it was there. So I set that panel aside for now and we're gonna move on to the second card design. So I have the exact same stencil here with another cardstock panel and I've cleaned off my stencil so I don't get any ink transfer. For this one here, I'm gonna do the same color combination, but I'm gonna change up how I add the color to the panel. So I'm going to have the paw prints go directly across the entire panel, but rather than have it go on a diagonal and mix the colors in each of the paw print openings, I'm going to use the post-it tape and put it straight across the panel, and I'm going to just put one color per row. I don't wanna have any of the colors blending in the paw prints, I just wanna have it completely blue, completely green, and so on, so that each of the rows is distinctive with its own color. To do this, I like to use two pieces of post-it tape, which prevents me from getting any ink in the bottom or the top row that I'm kind of working in between. And I just reuse the tape and continuously move it up and down on the panel. Now, if you find you're getting a little bit of ink transfer because it's sitting on that post-it tape, you can definitely switch it out for a new piece. But I didn't find I had any problem at all, and I was able to easily use these pieces all the way up the entire panel. And you can see here on this one too, I also changed it up a bit by starting with the other end of the rainbow on the bottom. So I have the blue at the bottom versus the pink and I'm finishing with the pink on the top. This is just giving it a little bit of a different look since we are creating two similar card designs even though they have a bit of a different pattern. Okay, so now I have that one finished there. I just removed that stencil and you can see we have some really weird spacing with those paw prints. But once again, it's not gonna matter because we are going to trim the panel down. Okay, so next up we need to create some sentiments for our cards. So I have two different sentiment stamps from the Canine Companion stamp set. I love the fun playfulness of this font and thought it went really well with the panels that we created. So I'm stamping both of these onto a piece of black licorice cardstock. I did treat the cardstock first with my anti-static powder bag and that's just going to ensure that we don't have embossing powder sticking where we don't want it. 
I stamped him out with that Versamark ink, which is a clear sticky ink, and then I'm adding my white embossing powder directly over top. Once I have it on there, I'm gonna go off screen and I'm going to heat emboss these to set that embossing powder. And now you can see I'm adding a few different sentiment strips here on top of the sentiments, and I'm gonna die cut these. These are the new skinny strips dynamics that we have both a straight end as well as a fishtail banner end. And I decided I wanted to use one of each. So for the smaller sentiment that we're going to use on one of the cards, I use the straight edge. And for this longer one here, I'm gonna have this coming off of the edge of the card. And I want the edge that we're going to see to have that fishtail banner detail. I ran those through my die cutting machine and now we are ready to start assembling our card. So for the smaller sentiment, I'm gonna be using that one on the banner that we created that has all of the paw prints kind of within the center of the panel. And then for the longer one there, I'm going to have that on the one where we have the pattern coming off of the right hand side. So I did trim down my panels and I'm adhering them to white card bases, which measure four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I am adhering both the panels as well as the sentiment strips onto my cards with foam adhesive. This is just going to give the cards a little bit more dimension since we have a very flat one layer card. For the second card here, like I mentioned, I'm adding that panel on there. This one is a little bit larger. I didn't cut the panel down as small. And I added that yappy birthday sentiment directly coming off of the right hand side. And now we have two finished cards. We use the same stencil and ink colors, but you can see that we were able to change up the design by changing how we applied the ink, as well as changing what areas of the stencil that we used on the card. So I hope you got some ideas in today's video on ways that you can do some quick and easy ink blending and use one stencil and get a couple of different looks from that design. If you're interested in any of the supplies I used in today's video, I have those listed in the video description below. As always, I appreciate you being here for another video and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks so much for watching.